Hey everyone, I'm Robbie Cornthwaite. I'm Daniel Marlin. I'm Angelo Costanza. I'm Marco Fleury. I'm Marcelo Garuska. I'm Ian Fife. This is Casio. And you're watching. 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 And, you're watching. and you are watching Pure Bread Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. Hi, I'm Daniel Mullen, former Adelaide United player and Asian Champions League winner with Western Sydney Wanderers. When it comes to any of my soccer needs, I do my shopping here at Soccer Locker. An Australian owned and operated business, the store is located at Shop 5 of 181 to 183 Grange Road, Finden. Founded in 2017, Soccer Locker was introduced into the market to fulfill all the soccer related needs of Australians, providing a huge range of quality clothing and equipment ranging from soccer balls team kits, goalkeeper gear, accessories and much more. Recently arrived stock also includes stunning retro kits from some of our favourite past eras as fans of the world game. Soccer Locker is a specialist in Premier range boots, Adidas and Puma, goalkeeper gear and licensed merchandise. Visit us online at www.soccerlocker.com.au with free delivery Australia wide. So get shopping now at our Finnan store, open from 10am to 5.30pm from Monday to Friday, and open Saturdays from 9am to 3pm. Hello and welcome to the Pure Bread Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. You've joined Ellis Gelios to review the fantastic win over Melbourne City, 2-1 in the end. Once more, Calviet's team proving that uh, we've got a good, strong underbelly when it comes to being able to win games probably without deserving three points, which is, I've got to say, it's it's really quite a nice tonic as an Adelaide United fan. We've always been the kind of team that's um, prided ourselves on, on winning performances and displaying performances where we've shown that we're the better team. And just more recently, particularly with that win against Newcastle, the draw against Wellington probably, and uh, last night's win over Melbourne City shows that we're now, I guess, developing into a team that knows how to win ugly. And I'm very, very, very happy to see it because uh, I think there's nothing better than a solid... Uh, undeserved last gasp away win as a fan and I just think it's exhilarating and sometimes it's it's a little bit more interesting than actually just outplaying teams and winning comfortably so uh, I'm a fan I've got to say and I'm enjoying it and you know people can question the nature of the performance all they like at the end of the day uh, winning is all that matters and if we can keep on this kind of run and, and mounting these wins together then uh, there's plenty to sort of chirp about as a Reds fan right now what I will say though is that it does appear quite strongly that the case is that we're going to start running out of games soon. So um, there is that internal pressure as well to uh, make sure that we win as many games as we can between now and the end of the regulation season because we're going to start running out of games really, really soon. Um, but I want to talk about this win, a great win, 2-1 over City. Uh, Lopez scoring an early goal, which... Uh, Let's face it, he didn't mean. Uh, it was certainly a cross-turn shot, but uh, looping over Glover um, and Mohamed Toure getting the uh, chocolates in the end for Adelaide United with a, a very, very, very composed finish after a howler from Carl Jenkinson. Uh, Glover in goal for Melbourne City certainly didn't have his best game, but uh, I think, you know, Gauchi for us in goal started poorly. Um, his kicking wasn't great, particularly in the first few stanzas of the first half. But um, some great saves in the second half when we were under a lot of pressure. And I think he really redeemed himself uh, despite a pretty poor start. Uh, looking at how we lined up, Gauchi did start in goal. Uh, Lopez played it right back. Lockie Barr and Jakobsen, the two centre-backs. It appears now that Lockie Barr's overtaken Tratt as the first... Uh, well, the second choice centre back, I guess, behind Jakobsen. Uh, Kiddo playing left back on this occasion. Uh, he changed the midfield. This was the big talking point, tinkering up the midfield for the Reds. Uh, and it worked for Cole. Uh, so credit to him. Dorigo, Juan de, the two screening players, and then Mork possibly playing one of, well, definitely playing one of his last games. I'm not sure whether it was definitely his last game. Uh, Mork in the 10 role, as we've always seen. Uh, and then Bernardo playing out wide on the right. Goodwin out wide on the left. And Ibusuki up front, who had a pretty decent game, was good enough at holding the ball up. Um, had one sort of good half chance that he didn't take, but um, it is what it is. Uh, looking at City's lineup, Glover in goal. Uh, Galloway and Jamison, the two fullbacks. Good and Jenkinson, the two center halves. A lot of them going down for extended periods in this game. And I've just got to wonder whether you can link that back to all the COVID just rampaging the City team and whether that's kind of severely 
uh, weaken these players physically. Uh, O'Neill and Metcalf, the two screening in midfield. Uh, then Kisnorbo went with uh, Tilio and Nabu out wide. Baron Gay down the guts and Jay Mack up forward. Uh, in the end, I think Adelaide United just showed that, like I said at the start, they have this you know superior way of being able to surprise teams. Um, in the the dying stages of games, and it's a nice little weapon to have on your side. There's no question about it. Um, now this formula of of starting slowly and finishing strongly, can it continue? Can we continue to rely on this? Well, you'd have to say no because there's no real kind of evidence that shows that teams can continue to do this. Uh, you know, across an entire season. The only one that you could possibly link it back to is Victory, who won back in 17-18. But, you know, again, people would just kind of put that out there because of the fact that Victory that season finished outside the top two and were one of the only teams, possibly the only team, uh, to ever win the A-League from outside the top two. But uh, even then, I'm not sure that you could really label them as being a team that didn't deserve to win games that often in that campaign. We've only still won four games this season, and I think only one of them has been really that deserved. Well, actually, you'd have to say two. But uh, yeah, two really undeserved wins, and certainly some draws that would be questioned quite rightly, I think. I think on the whole, on the balance and on the evidence that we have, I think you have to say that uh, we probably wouldn't be able to rely on continuing to play poorly and somehow winning games. But for now, it's working, so let's not get too negative on that. Now, the midfield balance, obviously, is a the big ticket item for Adelaide United in midfield being left out on this one. Uh, it worked. It worked. Uh, Juan De wasn't really that effective for Adelaide United in midfield, but bringing Dorigo back restored some of that balance. And uh, I think Carl Viet now, looking forward, may have a question uh, to really ask himself here as to what midfield combination best suits him. I personally think that um, in order to make life easier, he just plays Juan De as a centre-back. Just take him out of midfield. You don't know what centre-backs you're going with here. You're trying to shuffle between Lockie Barr, Jacob Tratt, and also Timothy, and none of them have really convinced as as the second-choice centre-back starting next to Jakobsen. So just play one day there. He's reliable. And then that frees up someone else that you can use in midfield. Zach Kloffs, I thought, was really, really good for Adelaide United in midfield. He looked good. And for someone that's just come on and didn't have a whole lot of time to impress, I thought he actually played really, really well. Some good balls into Ibasuki when he first came on and some great crosses, too, from out wide. And uh, he's got a sharp eye for a through ball. So I'm looking forward to Kloff obviously getting more fit and uh, and being able to be a bit more of a weapon for us going forward. Now, a poor night for the keepers. I wouldn't quite question Joe Gauchi. But, you know, he needs to start better. There's no question about that. Very casual, very unfocused. And I, I thought it was a sticking point for us in that first stanza. But in the end, he redeemed himself, like I said before. And, you know, when Delinov comes back, these keepers have just continually taken the job off one another throughout the last two seasons. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen there. But uh, Gauchi, a very strong second half. Do we need to see more of Iran Kunda? I really liked his positivity. I think he's really possibly the one, particularly when Bernardo's not in his best form, that uh, is going to be the closest thing to a, a Ben Halloran, whereby just backs himself, you know, really keen to sort of push forward at every opportunity. And um, I just love his energy, and I do want to see more of him. So, again, it's a good selection headache for Carl Viet. Cavallo's a concern. He's always been really good coming off the bench, but he's seemingly sliding out of the 11. I only got five minutes, the sort of token five minutes from Carl Viet against Melbourne City, which, you know, I thought we were kind of craving his energy in this team at, at one point in this game and um, he's been assisting goals recently as well so just wondering why Carl's leaving Cavallo out so often uh, particularly with obviously you know how much of a marketable asset he's been off the pitch it just seems a little bit uh, unusual that Cavallo has been left out of the team so much. Carl Jenkinson, geez, a real mare of a moment. Hard to think this guy was playing for Arsenal so recently and also Nottingham Forest at a good level in the English game. But uh, there you go, we mugged him off in the end. And, um, you know, with that, I think just a great performance in in the sense that, you know, 
it wasn't a, a complete performance, but a very strong second half and uh, resilience, a lot of resilience shown. Antonis Bagonis has written a great review on the Inner Sanctum. Go check that one out. Uh, it's been great bringing you this review of the win over Melbourne City, 2-1 for Adelaide United. We'll see you very shortly. Thank you to Soccer Locker, our sponsors. Thanks to Flow FM for having us in the studio, and we'll see you for our preview against MacArthur this weekend. All the best, and keep watching Pure Red Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV.